Hey everybody, welcome to today's training. This is TJ with ShopBot Tools. And today we're going to do a training session on slot together projects. And a couple things that we're going to look at here is first of all we're going to talk about building complexity into the parts of themselves. That way we can eliminate outside fasteners. And then the other thing we need to consider is the thickness of the material at hand. It's really nice to be able to throw a sheet good up there and be able to do something out of a four foot by eight foot sheet. However, the problem with using plywoods and different sheet goods is the inconsistency of the material thickness. Very, very seldom do you get a three quarter inch plywood that's actually 0.75. The Baltic birch in this example is actually measuring 0.69 which is going to throw off stuff when we get into projects like this scissor stool here where we're joining it together with a mortise and tenon style where we have a tenon and a mortise well different thicknesses of materials are going to throw off the drawing size of these because if it's up thicker it's not going to fit into the joint so we're going to try to go over some tips and tricks to help you with with that as well as laying this sort of thing out so let's take a look here at that one. That's, there's, there's an example of the file we just looked at. It's a little folding stool, and, and the tolerances on this are so tight that uh, with the .69 there, that file, it works just fine. However, if we had another piece of plywood somewhere in a different part of the country or part of the world where another customer downloads this file, uh, their material is going to measure different. So how do we get around that to get that thing to join together? And here's kind of an example of the parts being cut where you see the joints now. There's going to plug into there. So mortise and tenon type joints and also slot together projects is what we'll look at as we move forward. So let's take a look at the complexity of the part a little bit and then we'll get into the slotting and uh, tolerance part. So this is a nice project to reference here. This is a patio chair you can download from our website and it it folds up real nice, easy to store, easy to carry. And the way these were traditionally, uh, when I was teaching high school, we did not have CNC. And the way the students would put these together is they'd cut all the parts out with a full traditional shop using your planer, joiner, bandsaw, crosscut saw, table saw. And then for assembly, you had a lot of different tools. You'd have to have a countersink counter bore, you'd have to have glue squares layout it, it, it took a it took quite some time to put these projects together and when i started with shopbot uh, i was listening to ted's speech about building complexity into the part the cnc machine that you have the shopbot is able to cut a curve just as accurately and efficiently as it can cut a straight line so why don't you start building some of these uh features into your parts and and he made a good point about making try to make one part complex versus having multiple complex parts and that stuck with me and that's where I've kind of come up with some of these training ideas and designs around what his speech was and for this one here to eliminate all the stuff I wanted to have this so the shop bot did everything the only thing I would need is a bottle of glue to hold the pieces of wood together and that's where, instead of using the screws and plugs, built in the mortise and tenon style joint, where you, you have a notch out of one board and a notch sticking out of another board. And that's the way you would do this here, and that's what we'll look into. So here you can see that original one on top was just the, the long, smooth curves. And it takes the machine one minute and fifty seconds to cut that out and this was just a, a an example I did just to do a, a quick time trial with the same feeds so three inches per second and the same passes of three passes to get through that three quarter and I wanted to see how much time extra it was going to co cost and take the shop bot to cut these complex parts so down here look at this I've added all the tenons to this piece so you've got all these extra tenons on for the slats, for the supports, and same feed rates. Instead of the 1 minute and 50 seconds, it now takes 2 minutes and 5 seconds. So we've added 15 seconds to add those tenons on there. So you think about there's four legs per chair at 15 seconds apiece. You're adding 1 minute and cut time on the shot bot. So that's one more minute of cut time. But what that has now created is a slot together joint. And this slot together joint, I can just put some glue now in that joint 
And what I can do from there is push it together or hit it together with a rubber mallet and put a clamp on it. And I don't have the layout time that I previously had with laying out manually with a pencil and a ruler, holding things in place, pre-drilling. So the one minute extra that it takes to cut here saves me several minutes of assembly time and operator time. So if you can build the complexity into the part like this patio chair, you'll actually save time down the road. So not only are we going to build some complexity into our projects, but we also now have to take into things like tolerances, material thicknesses, and we're going to look at a couple different stools and projects that are slot together style where it's really nice because we can cut them out of a flat sheet good like this. We can ship them flat, we can uh, carry them around flat and then assemble them on site and take them back down at the end of a show. So we're going to look at some slot together furniture. So let's move into that. So let's refer back to that patio chair real quick. We were talking about how this slotted together. You can see the mortises and the tenons here in the cut part. You can see when we're assembling it we're putting glue down inside the the, the pocket and then when it goes together it's all just pushed together parts that you now need to just hold with a clamp. So looking at this file we're understanding the, the joinery here the of the mortise and the tenon but the things we need to look at right here is this project, this actual file, was drawn on material that's 0.71 thick. So if you have exactly 0.71 thick material, this file is drawn and ready for you to go. But what's the option of that happening? You know, not as good as you think. Uh, materials are anywhere range from 0.69 to 0.74, uh, even in the same bunk I found sometimes. So uh, a project like this, we would need to come in and do some modifying of these slots being at 0.71, if I now had a material that was 0.74 and I measure the width of the slot, it's only 0.72. It would not fit in there. So there's things I would have to do as far as resizing the drawing. I could add tolerances or offsets and we'll look at those throughout this training. But let's step back there. Why is this 0.72 if the material was only measuring 0.71? Well, you do need to draw a little bit of a tolerance into your uh, joint. The machine will cut it so accurate that if you have that exactly across at 0.71 and that's the thickness of the material, uh, it could go together so tight that it will not come back apart. Uh, the Baltic birch in this example is, is pretty consistent, so I've only got a 10 thousandth um, tolerance, where if it's uh, other lower grade of quality, plywood will even add 20 or 30 thousandths to a tolerance. So what we're saying by tolerance is we're actually drawing it a little bit bigger. So we'll look here at the height of this and that is measuring 1.03 inches. And that is the slat that slides over this tenon right here. And if that measured 1.03, the tenon itself actually only measures one inch. So that has a 30 thousandth tolerance on there. So I'd say you're safe. A good rule of thumb is if you add like one, one thousandth on each side, so uh, this one's off a little bit because of the uh, Baltic birch being so consistent. I have it pretty much dialed in, but the files that we'll look at here in a minute are, are a little bit different where we'll, we can get it more of a consistent tolerance. So there's something we want to take into effect. And then the other thing is over here, as we have a height of these, these measure uh, just over a half inch in, in, in height, and when you see it, we pocket these out here, uh, we actually have a cut depth of 0.56, so it goes down a little deeper than the tenon height, and that way you've got room for glue uh, to go down into that joint. And we'll also look at these files where we have offsets, where you can build in a pocket allowance right here, where depending on if you do a positive or a negative allowance, it will allow you to cut uh, inside or outside that line. What we need to watch when we do it this way is if we go smaller, we've now created a smaller round here, which is going to be smaller than the, the dog bone radius, and your bit may not go in there and fit. So what we'll try to do is get around that and fix that before we even get to tool pathing. But in a file like this, and you get this file, you download this, this isn't very consistent for different plywood thicknesses. We want to create a generic file over here, a drawing that we can save, and then no matter what 
they throw at us for different thicknesses of material it's an it's a take a little bit of work at this point but a lot easier than where we're at right here and be able to change this to set the size to our new slot together uh, material all right so what I'm gonna demo for you next here is a bar stool and how to make it so it's for different thicknesses to apply what it slots together and it uses the mortise and tenon joint and let's just look, we're looking at a regular uh, V-carve profile, and I have a material thickness of 0.73. So what I have over here is I have just the generic drawing, all the vectors of this file, and it has not been modified yet. You see there's no dog bones, you see the slots aren't there for being slotted together, and we're going to watch a video of this cutting, and then come back and uh, change this to a different thickness. But what I have here is I've left all these things on here so they're easily to change. This slot right here has a thickness of 0.73. So for this and a 0.73 material, I'm actually going to want to go, hey, I want you 0.75. And then watch how it, the thickness of that will change, makes it a little bit wider, and then that now has the tolerance to slide together. But we'll come back and look at these files and modify one to a different thickness after we see the video of it cutting in action. Alright, so what we're looking at here is a, a full-size machine and it is cutting out out of the plywood our slotted together furniture. And the first thing it cuts out is the slot. So it's cutting out the pockets um, to a thickness and a width that's a little bit bigger than the tenon. That way you've got some tolerance for it to slip together and some room for the glue. So when it gets done cutting out the pockets, now it's going to go around and cut out the profile. So there's the top, there's the seat that you'll be sitting on. But then the other two side pieces, they're going to have slots where they get slotted together. And this style of furniture is really nice because one is it cuts flat, you can ship it to somebody flat, and then it can be assembled. So for us at trade shows, it's really nice where we can save on crating and have everything shipped flat, get to the show, assemble it, and at the end of the show, we take it, knock it back down flat, and ship it back to the shop bot. And then we can use it again. So that's where this kind of style is real nice. And it's a nice way to make something out of sheet goods real easily. So you can see here, now it's starting to add the outside profile, where we've got a couple tenons up on the top there. And then down on the bottom, it's got the, where the slot is. So notice there's two sides to this. The one has a slot on the top, one has a slot on the bottom for the two pieces that are going to slide together. And then what will happen is that those will slide together and then the top will push down in there and then hold the pieces tight. So you can uh, fit it, air fit it first, make sure it goes together, and then definitely recommend you put the glue in there so it stays permanent if you're going to keep it assembled. So for us at the shows, we'll just cut it with a little bit tighter tolerance, but... So there's a set of slots on the one, and then there's a set of opposite slots on the other piece. So those slot thicknesses have to be thicker than the plywood so it can push through there. So this one here looks pretty tight trying to get through. So those two will have to fit right. Those slot together, and now you've got four tenons sticking up. So if you don't have those the right size or a little bit of tolerance built in there, it's going to be a, you're going to have to get the rubber mallet and plus some more action to push that thing together. So that's what we're going to look at here. Here's some slot together furniture. So there's the stool that we just cut and then over on the left there's the bar stool that we showed you the file for. Both of them have the same concept where they slot together and they use a mortise and tenon. But what we got to start thinking about now is how do we make this easier on ourselves? We draw this thing once and now it's six months later and somebody says hey can you cut me out a set of those? They bring you some material. It's a different thickness. How do we make it easier on ourselves? to redraw this and retool path it. Alright, so here's the footstool we just cut out. and This is showing us the drawing file. And notice up here it's called footstool period 7.3. That's because this is designed for a 0.73 thick material. Now, I want to cut the same stool out of the Baltic birch that I run here at the shop. Nice consistent stuff. Uh, however, the thickness on that measures 0.69. So if we went right now and cut, just went over here and saved again and tried to cut this back out with the 0.69, then 
these slots are are a lot are going to be a lot wider than point six nine, and it's going to be way too sloppy going together, and it's not going to be a very sturdy stool. So for us to come in here and change that, we got a lot of node editing to do to make this slot smaller. I got to make these shorter. I got to get rid of the dog bones so I can modify these. Maybe I'm going to cut this out of a quarter inch bit instead of a three eighths bit. So there's a lot to change here, and even just going over here to the tool paths. And in my toolpath, adding a pocket allowance, uh, that's, that's going to work sometimes for you. And that's definitely a, a valid route where you could say, hey, I just want to take these and make them cut, but I want to go, oh, negative three thousandths in. And what you'll do is, when you calculate that, you can preview this with a solid on, and you can see what it's done is it's, br it's put in a pocket offset. But the pocket that we put on there, with that, just even that small offset, it won't make it enough for the dog bones to get around. So nice options built both into the pocket and the profile toolpath for doing allowance offsets. And they are very valuable for a lot of things. For what, for making us easier right now, it's not part of this main game plan, but it definitely can be used uh, sometimes in need. So versus me sitting here having to try to spend a couple hours editing this thing and making it right, I've got in the habit of creating a template file over here where I've got this, the two basic, here's the two parts, notice there are three final, but this is the same part here where it's just modified a little bit. So what I would do for this project is um, I need to delete this, and first of all, if I'm going to make this footstool .69 for the, th the thickness that I'm using, I better save with a new extension right now so I don't get in and accidentally oversave my stuff. So I'm going to go footstool point six nine, and then you'll end up having a bunch of these files for a project if you cut a lot of them out of out of different material. So the first thing I would do instead of just moving this original one over there, I'm going to just copy and paste that so I have it over here, and then I'd never change the original. The original always stays there. So, and, and then again, now this goes into the drawing of the Vectric software. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could do these. Uh, we could come in here and just do the transform objects and set the selected object size where, you know, we're not going to change the length of the tenon. We just want to change the thickness. So I don't want these linked. I can unclick that and I can say, hey, it's going to be uh, 0.6 nine material but I want to add a I want to add 0 0.01 on each end of that for a tolerance so I can type that in not point two, <laughs> point oh 0.02 so that's point 0.1 on each side and if I hit equal that tells me bang it's going to be the point 0.71 and then watch where you have it anchored if I keep it right in the middle it's just going to go out left and right up and down it's going to stay in the same position so I can hit apply right there and it, it didn't you barely can see that, but what it did was it changed the length just a little bit. I'm sorry, the width just a little bit so you could have that thicker piece. So now it measures 0.71. And yet you could go and do that on all of these. Uh, you could, you know, if that's, there's, there's a lot of different options. You could go on all of these now and just, if that's what's easiest for you is going in and changing these. Uh, you know, that's that's one way of doing it. If there was a lot of projects, oops, I must have changed this one here. Sorry. Uh, if there's a lot, a lot of these, sometimes it might be better just to come in and do like the mirroring and the rotating and, and, and slip them over. For me, this is this simple right now. I can just keep clicking on them and hitting apply. I'm not linked. It's I'm going to 0.71. Okay, bang. So that part's good. I'm happy with that. Now that one would be ready to be dog boned. The other one here is I got my two sides the, for the slotted part. So again, I'm going to leave the originals here because I might c need to come back to the originals someday. And I even take the leaving the originals a step farther. If you look up here in No Man's Land, a lot of times I'll keep the original how I designed it. You know, here's me just starting out drawing shapes, adding arcs, adding fillets, adding angles, and then here's the pr here's the process of going through these and then start getting into adding the tenons. But maybe you get into something so far you don't like it. You can always come back here and find stuff. So it doesn't hurt to have that saved up there. And that's just something I, I prefer to do. It's obviously um, up to the user. Okay, and then 
instead of nesting these right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the two copies next to each other so we can see how we'll modify them from here. So we know that if the material is 0.61, I did want to have I did want to have the slots changed. So right now, if I'm starting here doing double, I'm still doing both. So there's no sense of having the second piece yet. Just modify just this first piece. It's the same thing with the patio chair where you've got six of one slat, five of another slat. Just modify the one and then nest them all out. So first things first, let's go, hey, we know that earlier we wanted to have a width of 0.71. Again, I'm not linked. That changes the thickness. It's in the middle. Same thing here. I wanted to have a thickness of 0.71. And you can actually have multiple ones of these selected, but I like to just do them one at a time so I can make sure I'm staying right where I need to be. Same thing with these here now. Those can't be too tall. If they're 0.73 tall, they're going to be sticking out further than the material. And do we need to have a tolerance on these so much? I want them to actually be 0.69 tall, the thickness of the material sticking up. So from this bottom left corner, I would like that to be up 0.69. So from right here, I can change to the bottom left corner as an anchor point and say 0.69 high and what it will do is it will shrink that down and again I could have had both of these selected but what I'm going to do is verify that I don't need a tolerance on that I want that to be I want that to be 0.69 tall so it's flush with the material so right there I've now I've changed the heights I've changed the slots I don't need to change the length of this. This three inches is still referenced up here at, with a slot of 3.02. So we're good. We really pretty fast there. Just modified this file. Okay, and then here's where you can get into modifying your parts to make them your, your left and your right side. So just to put them two like this. And, you know, there's really any order what works for you. It would be more efficient if I would have snipped these and put the dog bones on before I moved them over but just to show you, you know so we know one needs to have a slot so there's a through slot and see now that they're all becoming attached and rejoining I've got this nice new thickness but for me to come back and change that it'd be a lot of work where it's nice to have this one back over here but just to keep just to show it to you here you know that one would have a top slot and we wouldn't need to have this bottom part that's gone so that's how that piece would look and then this one here it doesn't even need that slot because this one has it through, so I can delete it. And then here, all we would need is this one on the bottom. So I can just come back to my scissors, delete that. And real easily there, I've just created the parts. And again, just a little bit of tune-up here as far as going in and adding your dog bones to what size bit you're going to use, going around and clicking on those, and then coming over and just creating new tool paths or using the existing ones and just changing the pass depths. So this is a, a nice way to do it. This one here is obviously pretty simple because it has two parts. But refer back to like the patio chair where if I had a left leg, a right leg, a top slot, and a bottom slot all sitting over here that I could easily grab, bring over here with just some snipping and some uh, manipulating of setting the object size, I've now fit it to my plywood very easily. So I'll just refer back to this to wind things up. Uh, I mean, you can spend some time with the dog boning and the tool pathing, but that can all be seen in another tutorial. Just wanted you to get a, a couple tips and tricks for making your slots. The machine will cut it. If you set it to 0.69, it will cut it to 0.69, and, and it'll cut it so close to tolerance that the parts won't slide together. So add those in. And make it easy on yourself as far as if you got to modify stuff. And well, you might come up with stuff that's better than what we did right here, but uh, feel free to share it and post it on the forum. But hope what you saw today will help you be able to make multiple parts out of different thickness materials and have this nice slot together type project. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.